everything and I mean absolutely everything you could need or want to know about menstrual cups will be in this video. By the end of this video you're going to know what a menstrual cup is, how to insert, wear and remove the menstrual cup, how to clean and sterilize your cup, what to do if it's leaking, what to do if it's stuck, how to choose the right size, contradictions and frequently asked questions. All of the resources and timestamps will be linked below so you can very quickly and easily find the information that you're looking for. It's a lot, so grab some tea and let's unpack this together. If you haven't met me before, my name is Kimberly and I'm a nutritionist, certified holistic health coach and menstrual cycle educator. So I talk about menstrual cycles, periods and period products on a daily basis. When it comes to menstrual cups, I am mostly talking to people who are cup curious but they're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, don't know where to start not sure if it's the right product for them, they're not sure if they would even enjoy the cup, and some of them are feeling like perhaps it's all just marketing hype. I have personally been using a menstrual cup for six years now, and when I say that this was the thing that changed my relationship with my period for the better, that cannot be understated. So I first discovered the power of the menstrual cup when I had a really good friend raved to me about her experience using a menstrual cup. And this conversation was the gentle push that I needed to give me the courage to try it out for myself. And I think most of us become cup curious through word of mouth and perhaps it's a friend who's shared an experience. And I also think that it's true that once we are converted, we then become preachers of that same message because we just wanna tell everyone how incredible this product can be. Let me know in the comments where you're at on your menstrual cup journey. Are you someone who's cup curious or have you just recently started to use a menstrual cup or are you like me who's already converted and just wants to share the message far and wide? So what is a menstrual cup? A menstrual cup is a soft and flexible reusable cup that's made from medical grade silicon. It's inserted into your vaginal canal and it's designed to catch your period blood. It's very easy to fold and it molds to the shape of your vagina. When it's inserted properly, it is virtually leak proof and it creates a vacuum which holds the cup in place and can be safely worn for up to 12 hours. The menstrual cup is an incredible health tool. Your period blood can tell you a lot about your menstrual health and your overall health. And keeping an eye on our period blood is something that I believe we should all get into the habit of doing. Since the menstrual cup is designed to catch your period blood, this means that you can check in on the amount, the color, and the texture of your blood, which is impossible to do with pads or tampons. Some cups even have indicators on the inside which show you the amount of blood collected so you can measure and record exact amounts. A typical period will be anywhere from five mils to 80 mils, and the color of the blood should be a rich red color. Keeping an eye on your menstrual blood means you can identify when you need to have a conversation about the quality of your period blood with a healthcare provider. If you want to know more about what's normal and when to reach out for help, I have a free Meet Your Cycle ebook, which I have linked down below in the description for you to download. There is an initial learning curve when it comes to inserting, wearing and removing a menstrual cup, and it can feel a little bit frustrating at times. Just remember to be kind and patient with yourself. You will get there in the end. Give yourself a few cycles to get it right and experiment with what works for you and what is right for you. And the good news is that once you get it right, it becomes second nature and you normally don't really need to think about it. How to insert the cup. The first thing I have to say to you is you need to relax. This is the key, this is the number one thing. So before you get to inserting your cup, make sure you take a few deep breaths and just take that extra time. If you're feeling anxious or tense, it's going to be really difficult to insert the cup and really difficult to have a positive experience with the cup. You'll also want to get really comfortable with the idea of inserting your index finger and your thumb inside your vagina as well. Use a mild fragrance-free soap to sanitize both your hands and the cup. You'll notice that there are these tiny holes around the top of the cup. 
It's really important to clean these too, so you'll want to fill the cup with water, place your hand over the top of the cup, flip it upside down, and then squeeze the water out. Double check to make sure none of the holes are blocked with blood, and now you're good to go. It's going to take some trial and error to find a position that works best for you. Some of the most common positions are getting yourself into a deep squat, one foot up on the toilet, or sitting on the toilet. I find getting into a deep squat works best for my body. I find that I can rock back and forth to find a position where I have the best reach. You'll also want to experiment with different ways of folding the cup. There are so many different ways that you can fold your cup, but I'm going to show you my three favorites. The first is the push down fold, which creates the smallest diameter and makes insertion easier. To do this, you'll push the rim down to the base and pinch the cup together so it doesn't pop open. Next is the C fold. Squash the cup flat and then fold it in half to create a C shape. The next one that I often use is the seven fold. So create the seven fold by squashing the cup flat and bringing one corner to the opposite bottom corner. This also creates a really small diameter. Once you've decided which fold you're going to use, get into the position which you think will work best for you. You're going to fold your cup and insert it all the way inside your vagina. Once it's fully inserted, remove your fingers and let it pop open. Sometimes I like to stand up and do a little jiggle dance before reinserting my finger to feel if it's open. It should feel round or oval with no creases or dents inside. If you feel that it's squashed or not fully open, you might need to remove it and reinsert it and that's okay. Even after six years of using the menstrual cup, I still have to reinsert it from time to time. If you are new to using the cup and you're still learning, just be patient, show yourself some compassion, you will get there eventually, it does take practice. Once you feel like it's open and inserted correctly, you can test it out by pulling very, very gently on the stem. If you feel some resistance, it means that that vacuum has been created and your cup has been inserted correctly. So how often should you change your menstrual cup? This is really going to depend on your flow and take some experimentation. If you're starting out, I recommend wearing your cup for about six hours and then checking to see how much blood has been collected. You can then decide if you want to wear it for eight, 10 or even 12 hours from there. Okay, so now it's time to remove your cup. First things first, you're going to wash your hands. Again, this is very, very important to relax. It's going to be very difficult to remove your cup if you're not relaxed. Find your comfortable position, whether that's sitting, squatting, or one foot up on the toilet, and you're going to insert your index finger and your thumb inside your vagina until you can find the stem of your cup. If you can reach the stem, you're going to gently walk your fingers up till you can feel the base of the cup and then you're going to pinch the base of the cup. What this will do is it will break the seal or break the vacuum and will allow you to very gently remove the cup. Remember to keep your cup upright so you can avoid any spills and once the cup is removed, you can empty your blood into the toilet, the sink or the shower. Now you're going to wash your cup with water and a mild fragrance-free soap and get ready to reinsert. Under no circumstances should you aggressively pull or tug on the stem. The stem is only there to help you access and find the base of the cup so you can pinch and break that seal, which is very critically important. If you pull and tug on this stem, not only will it be very painful, but it can be actually harmful as well. So it's only there for assistance. Now I understand that sometimes it can be quite difficult to reach the base of the cup. In this case, you can use the stem to gently rock the cup back and forth just to bring the cup a little bit further out so you can break that seal. But please do not tug or pull on this aggressively. You are going to hurt yourself. I personally prefer to change my cup in the shower. I just find that it's super easy, super clean, and it's just no fuss at all. And that's my personal preference and what I would recommend. There is a potential need to empty and change your menstrual cup in a public bathroom. But since you can safely wear the cup for up to 12 hours, this is a super rare issue unless you're someone who has a very heavy flow. Or perhaps 
someone who's traveling for days at a time. There are however ways around this. You can take a specially designed wipe to wipe down your menstrual cup before reinserting it or you can come prepared with a water bottle to rinse the cup off before reinserting it and then wash it with soap and water when you can. Let's talk about sterilizing your menstrual cup. So now that your period has ended or perhaps just before your next period starts, you're going to sterilize your cup. It's super simple. You're just going to fill a pot with water and bring it to a boil. Make sure you use enough water that the cup doesn't stick to the bottom of the pot, otherwise you're going to risk damaging or melting your cup. A hack that I like to use is to put my cup inside a whisk and this works perfectly. You're going to boil your cup for about three to five minutes and now it's sterilized and clean. So you should do this before using your cup for the first time and in between periods. Over time, your cup might become stained yellow or brown, even if you're cleaning and sterilizing it regularly. It doesn't affect the functionality of the cup and it doesn't mean that the cup is dirty. It's just something that can happen over time. It happens more often with the translucent cups rather than the colored cups. It is said that the coloring used in the colored cups is safe, but I would just urge you to always use a cup that is made from medical grade silicon, just so you can be assured that what you're putting into your body is in fact tested and safe. Let's troubleshoot some leaking together. If your cup is leaking, there's a chance that it's not inserted correctly or perhaps your cup is too full. Your cup needs to sit just below your cervix inside your vaginal canal. If you insert your cup too high, there's a chance that it's going to go past your cervix and your cup is going to leak. There is a really big variance in the size and shape of vaginas and all cervixes are going to be positioned quite differently. So where you position your cup is going to look Quite different between each person. I recommend taking time to explore the position of your cervix by inserting a clean finger inside your vagina and locating your cervix. It's going to feel like a spongy dimple and this is going to help you to determine how high or low and how deep you're going to need to position your cup. So to do this you want to do it on um, either the days before your period or the first day of your period because the position of your cervix actually changes throughout your cycle. Another reason that your cup is leaking is that it's not inserted properly or not fully unfolded so the vacuum hasn't been created. What I recommend is every single time you insert your menstrual cup you take your finger and you run it around the rim of the cup just to feel that it's fully open. You can also run your finger around the walls of your vagina to create more space for the cup to pop open. I personally do this every single time because it's going to guarantee that I have no leaks throughout the day. If you're finding that your cup just won't unfold or just won't pop open, um, perhaps you need to find a smaller cup that could be the solution. As we covered earlier, a typical period is going to be anywhere from 5 mils to 80 mils of blood over the entire period. However, there are conditions such as endometriosis or fibroids that can cause excessive bleeding and it could be that your cup is filling up quite quickly. So if you're finding that your cup is filling up quite quickly, you could investigate getting a cup that has a greater capacity. You may want to wear backups such as period panties or reusable pads or just even disposable pads. Just whatever you need to use to give yourself the peace of mind. Okay, so your cup is stuck. The first thing I want to say to you is please don't panic your cup will come out and this is something that is bound to happen to all of us at least once on our cup journey but i just want to reassure you that your cup will come out so your vagina is only about eight to ten centimeters long and there is nowhere for your cup to go so it's impossible for it to get stuck or lost somewhere inside your body i feel like a broken record at this point but it's really important to relax because the more stressed and anxious you are 
the harder it is to reach and remove your cup. Your vagina is a muscle. So just like any other time that you are stressed or tense and your muscles tend to bunch up, your vagina is going to do the same thing. It's basically going to clamp down on the cup and pull it up even higher out of your reach. So this is why it is very difficult to remove when you're stressed and tense and why it's very important to relax. If you're experiencing this, it's time to take a step back and take a moment to breathe. Make a nice cup of tea, maybe do some stretching, go for a walk if you need to, put on your favorite music, put on a TV show you enjoy. Whatever relaxes you, now is the time to do that. And once you feel a bit more grounded and you can regroup, you can come back and revisit the task and it's going to be so much easier to remove your cup. The position I recommend when your cup is stuck is the deep squat. So if this is accessible to you, get in a squat as deep as you possibly can. The reason why I recommend this position is because it gives you the greatest reach if you're struggling to reach your cup. And just like you would normally remove the cup, what you want to do is break the seal so you can wiggle the cup back and forth to remove it. If it's accessible to you, you may even like to push your finger up as far as you can and just the same as you would with a push down fold, push the rim of the cup to break the seal. Now, if you do this, just know that you may experience some spillage um, just of the nature of pushing so far down into the cup, um, but this will help you to remove the stuck cup. Please, under no circumstances, put anything foreign into your vagina to help retrieve or remove your cup. I know that if your cup is stuck and you're feeling very stressed about it, it can be tempting to want to try anything to get it out, but putting something inside your vagina that is not designed to go in there is going to put you at risk of infection or injury, which is something that we really want to avoid. So please don't put anything foreign inside your vagina. Now this might not be true for everyone, but I personally find that my cup feels more stuck when my period is on the lighter side. So on the last day or so of my period, I find that the cup tends to get stuck more often on these days. So over time, I've come to learn this about myself. So on that last day, I will just opt for period panties instead and forego the cup. Choosing the right size. All vaginas are different. So there's not going to be one menstrual cup to rule them all, one that's better than the other. It's really going to depend on you. So menstrual cups typically come in small, medium and large, or sometimes they'll be listed as zero, one and two, or perhaps A and B. It's really going to differ between cup manufacturers, which makes it quite confusing. But here are my best tips on choosing a cup that's going to be the right size for you. There are a few things to consider when choosing the size of your cup. So these factors are the position of your cervix, whether or not you've given birth, it doesn't matter if it was a vaginal birth or a C-section birth and how heavy your flow is. This is all going to weigh into what size cup you need. The main goal here is you want to find a cup that is comfortable to wear, stays firmly in place, the length of your cup fits inside your vaginal canal, and if you have a heavy flow, you want a cup that has enough capacity for your period blood. There are two key factors here. So the first is diameter, the second is length. Let's talk about diameter first. So most menstrual cup companies, when they talk about small, medium, large, they're talking about the diameter. There really is only a few millimeters of difference in diameter between the cup sizes. And it's important to remember that your vagina will expand to accommodate a larger cup. However, it's not necessarily going to be able to clamp down to hold a smaller cup in place if the tone isn't there. So if you're someone with a weak pelvic floor or someone who's given birth, you may benefit more from sizing up with your cup. This is going to help it stay in place. The next thing we need to consider is length and the length of your cup is really going to depend on the position of your cervix. 
Now the length of cups varies greatly between all the different brands. So you'll find a link below, um, which has a table of all the lengths of the different cups. In the description below, I have also linked the put a cup in it quiz, which asks you a bunch of questions and will help to point you in the right direction of a cup that is most likely going to suit you. Just remembering as well that you can trim your stem as short as you need to. You can even cut the stem off completely. If you're finding that the stem is poking out of your vaginal opening or causing any irritation. So if all it takes is just trimming the stem, that's perfectly fine and it's going to help your cup feel more comfortable inside your body. A menstrual cup is suitable for most people with periods. However, there are a few things to consider when deciding if the cup is right for you. The first one I'll mention is endometriosis. Now, of course, you can use a cup if you have endometriosis. I myself have endometriosis and I still use a menstrual cup. One thing to consider is that using a cup with endometriosis might actually exasperate your pain or trigger a flare-up. Because the cup does form a slight suction on your cervix and places pressure on your vaginal walls, this can be potentially painful. There's not going to be a yes or no answer for you, maybe just trying it. If it's causing you pain, it might not be the best option for you. A tilted uterus. So having a tilted uterus is not that uncommon. One in five women have a tilted uterus and many who have a tilted uterus will have success with the menstrual cup. However, it can make finding the position to place the cup slightly challenging. So it might just take a little bit more time with experimentation on finding the right position of the cup. However, if you feel like you've tried absolutely everything and you're still experiencing leaks, a menstrual disc might just be the option for you. Handling a menstrual cup requires access to clean running water. So for people that don't have access to clean running water, the menstrual cup is not actually the best option because this is going to increase the risk of infection or perhaps even TSS. There is a very small and unlikely chance that you can develop toxic shock syndrome from wearing a menstrual cup. The risk is so extremely small, but it's not impossible. Even still, your risk of developing toxic shock syndrome is much lower with a menstrual cup than it is with a tampon. So I searched the internet to find some frequently asked questions to see if I could shine some light in this video. So a question that was asked a lot is, what age can I start using the menstrual cup? And the answer to that is, you can start using the menstrual cup from your very first period. And this is just so long as you are comfortable with the process of using the cup. The next question is, can it be used by virgins or will it take my virginity? So using a menstrual cup will not take your virginity. Yes, it can be used by virgins and the menstrual cup is in no way associated with virginity in any way whatsoever. Another question I saw a lot is, is it bad to have blood inside your body? So menstrual blood doesn't start to decompose or cause odor until it comes in contact with oxygen outside the body, like in the case with pads and tampons. So because the menstrual cup catches your blood and it's contained inside the body, so long as it's inside the body, it is both safe and hygienic. And the blood backflow into my uterus? The answer is no. It's impossible for your blood to backflow into your uterus even if you were upside down, even if you were in a headstand. This is because when you have your period, your uterus is actively contracting to push out the menstrual blood through a tiny, tiny hole in your cervix. And it's impossible for the blood to go back through that tiny hole into your uterus. Okay, so we made it. I hope you've learned a lot today and you're feeling more informed and empowered and perhaps even feeling a bit more confident and courageous to embrace the menstrual cup into your life. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them or perhaps even create a follow-up video. If you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe, like and comment. These actions really mean a lot to me. They help me out and they are super encouraging to create more content like this. Until next time, stay healthy, stay well. I love you and I'll see you again soon.